right, all you listeners of the madness, and I guess a couple of you wrestling fans out there tonight, welcome back to Wonder the Radar. And apparently, according to Maestro, and I'm not too entirely sure on this, but item number 267 for the Home Shopping Network was actually a Google clock. Not too entirely sure how accurate that is, but we're just gonna move on from that because now it's time for us to find out what happened during this weekend's pay-per-view known as Extreme Rules from the Performance Center in Orlando, Florida. And yes, Maestro, I still refuse to call this the horror show because it was anything but a horror show. And with that said, folks, we go into the first match or the pre-show match that took place at Extreme Rules, which would see none other than Murphy going one-on-one against the Frankenstein monster himself, Kevin Owens. And during this match, action would go back and forth, and you would even get a chance to see an Extreme Rules size Tiger knee during this match, not once, but twice leading into a brain buster for a near fall for Murphy. But unfortunately for Murphy, the Frankenstein monster was rolling on all cylinders and would be able to prove so by not only doing a cannonball in the corner for near fall, but also doing his switch out moonsault, the same moonsault that he did to John Cena when he debuted in the main roster for WWE for near fall. But ultimately this match will come to an emphatic end with not only a super kick, but a KO size stunner for Kevin Owens to win this match and beat the disciple Murphy via pinfall. And a very entertaining match too, I may add. And the first official match to take place during this said pay-per-view would see Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro teaming up to fight against the New Day for the Tag Team Championships of SmackDown in a tables match. Now, prior to this match taking place, with us having no idea that this match was going to take place because we forgot to watch SmackDown, they would get advice from none other than the table master himself, Devon Dudley. And by them, I mean the New Day, which would lead to a New Day's rock chant, and also Devon telling them that the only way they need to win this match is by putting their opponent through a table, giving them the best advice and the obvious advice needed for them to go on in the set contest. And during the said match, you would not only see a slingshot drop kick to Cesaro against the stairs, but you would also see Shinsuke Nakamura get his just desserts during this match with a drop kick into the barricade and the hockey wall as well. You know, at this point, we're going to call it a hockey wall. Then you would even see a double suplex attempt reversed by Big E to Kofi Kingston to the outside through a table, only for Big E to pull off his E-Train-like spear to Cesaro almost through the table on the outside of the ring, but missing it by a good three to five feet, maybe five inches. We're not human yardsticks here, folks, but it was a pretty cool distance that it was near for that table. Then you would even see Kofi Kingston pulling off a beautiful trust ball to Shinsuke Nakamura on the outside of the ring, and even a big swing Kinshasa combination to take out Big E Langston during this match. To see this match come to an end again, thanks to none other than Cesaro and his overwhelming strength, catching Kofi Kingston mid hurricanrata only for him to lift him up in the air for Shinsuke Nakamura to deliver one good kick for those titles to go bye-bye out of the New Day camp and head right directly into Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura's territory for them to win this match by putting Kofi Kingston through two tables with a power bomb from the inside of the ring to the out via table smash. And after they won the titles, they would say, we were trying to get respect, we were done being overlooked, but we let our actions do the talking by putting the titles on the announce table while Michael Cole and Corey Graves just sat there listening to whatever Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura had to say. And for those who are wondering at home, Cesaro is now a seven-time 
Tag Team Champion after the night. Not only winning Tag Team Gold with not only Tyson Kidd, but also with Sheamus and even winning Tag Team Gold now with Shinsuke Nakamura. And even if you count the Indie Leagues, winning it with none other than your hero, Chris Hero, making him a true Tag Team Specialist. Almost the same length as not only Kane, but the Big Show as well. Yeah, because those guys have great track records of being tag team champions with anybody in the company. So if you're looking for a good tag team partner to win some gold, those are your guys. And oh, while we're on this factoid run, folks, this would be the third year in a row that Shinsuke Nakamura will walk into Extreme Rules and leave with gold. Making this Shinsuke Nakamura's pay-per-view to win gold which we're going to put the tagline on that for the Extreme Rules the next time we see Shinsuke Nakamura in any sort of title match at Extreme Rules. But with us trying to put that on the marquee that's already long and in all hell, folks, the next match to take place on this Extreme Rules pay-per-view would see none other than Nikki Cross going one-on-one -on -one against Bayley for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And the second I saw Sasha Banks at ringside with Alexa, I automatically knew what type of crap we were going to see, but hope for the best. Because during this match, you would not only see a lobotomizer neckbreaker by Nikki Cross for near fall, and even a cross body during this match for near fall, only for Bailey to counteract with not only a slam into the apron, but also into the glass as well for Bailey to get a near fall, only for Bailey to go old school back to her humble roots by pulling off a Bailey to belly during this match, still for near fall. But ultimately, this match will come to an end again after Nikki Cross will pull off the lobotomizer from the apron to the floor for a near fall, seeing Bailey going to dire straits, getting the glove or hand ring of one Sasha Banks for her boss hand ring to tag Nikki Cross in the ribs and hit her with a headlock driver to retain the SmackDown Women's Championship via pinfall. Truly proving once again that she's willing to do anything and everything to keep that title around her waist. And according to the maestro, she is now about two to three months away from becoming a year-long champion on SmackDown by using JBL methods. Yeah, pretty much. And the next thing to take place on this said pay-per-view would see Brave Wyatt once again talking about destroying his creation and also showing some footage of a karaoke thing that would take place on SmackDown as some horrifying footage that Rambling Rabbit would put on the screen. So basically, he's having a little bit of fun before their showdown at the swamp. And yes, Maestro, that's what I'm going to call it since the whole Southpaw Regional Wrestling thing that was supposed to take place this summer never happened due to this COVID virus. And speaking of things that never happened due to COVID-19, folks, unfortunately due to the fact that Apollo Crews failed his physical, and they're saying that it was because of what Lashley did to him last month with that full Nelson, but instead it revealed to be that Apollo Crews' momentum would once again be stopped due to COVID-19 or more or less his momentum would be stopped due to something else that was totally out of his control, only for MVP to say, you know what, Lashley, now I'm forbidding you to use that move, the full Nelson, to prevent me from further enhancing my career in the form of him trying to win the United States Championship legitimately, unlike what he did next by declaring himself the new United States Champion via forfeit and people on Wikipedia now making him a three-time United States Champion even though he didn't win the belt. That makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. <sighs> And if you think that's bad, folks, don't worry, stay tuned later on tonight because I got a feeling some of the other championship matches are going to make no sense as well. 
But before we get into that, folks, the next match to take place during this said pay-per-view would see none other than Seth Metal Seth Rollins, CrossFit Jesus, or the Monday Night Messiah Seth Rollins going one-on-one -on -one against the international man of mystery and San Diego's own Rey Mysterio in an eye for an eye match. A match, mind you, that I was looking forward to because I am a sick human being who likes horror movies and has watched many a man get their eye gouged out in multiple amount of horror movies and wanted to see how it was done during this said match. And they would take things to the extreme literally and figuratively during this match with Seth Rollins coming out to the ring with a pair of pliers to try to pluck the eye out of Rey Mysterio. Only for Rey Mysterio to come out from behind to try to get an advantage against Seth Rollins for him to suffer the wrath of a sling blade by Rollins. Then during this match we even see Rey Mysterio trying to use a rebar to take out Seth Rollins only for him to miss. Then for Seth Rollins to counter a Hurricane Rada into a Mishinoku driver, not a Falcon Arrow by the way, but a Mishinoku driver on the apron. Then for Seth Rollins to try to grab the rebar, try to take out the eye of Rey Mysterio only to miss. Then for my top three fears of what would happen by ringside to come to life with not only a dropped toehold by Rey Mysterio into the announce table almost taking out the eye of Seth Rollins, then Seth Rollins actually using a pen at the announce desk trying to stab the eye out of one Rey Mysterio. Then the next fear that I had that would happen at ringside would come to life with the tag rope being tied to Rey Mysterio, then Seth Rollins trying to do the classic 28 days later eye gouge maneuver, only for that to get countered into her karate into the ring pose. Yeah, it was a pretty gruesome match that would even see Rey Mysterio going so far to break a kendo stick, try to stab it into the eye of one Seth Rollins for that not to work, and then after Rey Mysterio would come back during this match once again by doing not only a sunset flip bomb into the barricade hockey wall that they would have in the corners, but also would be able to do a maneuver that Seth Rollins did to him by actually trying to put his eye onto the ring steps. Only for Seth Rollins to counter with a low blow and a blackout like curb stomp for Rey Mysterio to scream, no, no, no. Then you would see Seth Rollins once again go back to what he did two months ago by putting the eye of Rey Mysterio, the bad eye, mind you, that he exposed himself right onto those ring steps for Rey Mysterio's head to slide down on the stairs and actually hold his eye in place for Seth Rollins to try to go for it and attack him again only to realize that he won the match because Rey Mysterio's eye was out of the socket for Seth Rollins to throw up on the other side of the ring and for Seth Metal to win this match via eye removal. Now this would be the first time in our six and a half year history that we would ever say that somebody would win a match due to the fact that they removed somebody else's eye. Now we did hear online a whole bunch of people saying that it looks like one of those floaters you would get during those uh, fishing stores that you would go to, the eye that Rey Mysterio got pulled out with. But in my opinion, if I had to rate it between all the eye removals that we've seen in the many horror movies, I would have to give it a low 3 out of 10. Yeah, a 3 out of 10 for an eye removal. And after the match was over, Rey Mysterio would get taken to the back, wondering what in the world was going on, and we would get some good news from Charlie Caruso saying that as long as the nerve was not damaged, or the optic nerve wasn't severed from the socket itself too much, the eye of Rey Mysterio could be saved. And then Bailey would take her chance to say, well, Rey Mysterio was one of my favorites. I'm going to really be sorry for the fact that he lost his eye. But at the same time, I'm still Bailey Dope Straps. And here comes Dose Belt Banks making her way to the scene now to capture the women's championship. Totally showing a huge amount of disrespect 
for Rey Mysterio after almost losing his eye during the said championship contest. Or during this match for his eye. It wasn't for a championship, but at the same time, if you lose one of your five senses, yeah, that's not good. That's not good at all. And with that said, ladies and gentlemen, we might as well head back into music, and when we return, we'll be back with the second half of what happened during this Extreme Rules pay-per-view from the Performance Center in Orlando, Florida, right after this. So don't tune out on that madness just yet, folks, and stay tuned. 